Hey everyone, this is Don Rasmussen with Quartermaster Podcast, and this is Ryan Cook, my uh, trusty side kick. kick. Yeah. <laughs> <Something> <laughs> I'm not going like to kick you today. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, we're going to talk about something that actually has become a more popular topic uh, because everybody is on the bandwagon of having rental properties. Um, so the, the question has come up over the years, and in, in, you know, in the 36 years I've owned CPA firms, um, the reality is that I would historically probably said it's not a good idea, but mm -hmm. there's actually been some cases uh, that we've looked at that actually have turned out very, very well. So let me kind of walk you through it. So let's assume, Ryan, that um, you and, and Tierra have yourself a nice home that you bought and maybe, uh, or let's use your folks. Let's say they bought their home for a quarter million dollars years mm -hmm. ago, okay? Mm -hmm. And your dad has an S corporation because he's does. a business owner. And he comes to me and he says, listen, Donnie, you know, I'd be interested in um, selling my uh, home, which is now appreciated, let's say, to seven hundred and fifty thousand. I want to sell it to my S corporation, and like I said, historically, that'd probably be something I would uh, discourage from doing so. Mm -hmm. But under this couple of cases I've seen here recently, it m may make sense. Now, I'm not saying it's true for everybody, but there are situations where it comes to play. Let me explain to you. So, um, in this case here, his parents bought the home for two hundred fifty thousand dollars. 20 plus years ago. It's now worth 750. Now they want to turn it into a rental property. So they decide they're going to sell it. And they, they want to know, does it make sense to sell it to their S corporation? And let me explain to you why that would be helpful. So as a couple, your mom gets 250,000 and your dad gets 250,000 of tax-free capital gains, meaning tax free from capital gains on selling that property. So it's appreciated a half a million dollars they get to pull a half a million dollars out tax-free. Nice. Your mom would like that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so that so that's that's whether they sell it to somebody else, um, you know, they, they could get that. But because they want to keep it and you make it a rental property, they're going to sell it to the S corporation, lock in that half a million dollars, and now it becomes a rental property and they can operate like anything else. But some of the challenges that come with that is – and why I've said this in the past is that, you know, if, they, if the S corporation ever sells it, then they, of course, they don't get the, the treatment like you do as owning it yourself. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of walk through some of the, the questions or the doubts, that I guess you'd say, that people have brought up about it. Yeah, so some of the most common questions, one of them, is going to be um, if you sell the house to your S corp, um, will it increase your property taxes of the home? Yeah. Well, the likelihood is yes, depending upon where you're at, because... Uh, you may have a homestead exemption, like in the state of Texas and in certain states you get a homestead exemption. But the reality is the, the percentage that it would go up would be nominal, mm -hmm. okay? And so that's number one. And keep in mind that in your parents' example, they got a half a million dollars of tax-free. And let's say they're blended between state and federal is 40%. Uh, or, uh, let, me, let me back it up a bit. Uh, <laughs> Almost threw out the wrong number here. But let's say their, their capital gains is 20%. Mm -hmm. All right. So they just saved, what's that, on uh, half a million dollars, $100,000 mm -hmm. in taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to go quite a few years for that to, for the property taxes to override the, the savings and the tax, yeah. income taxes. So it would be beneficial in that case. Yeah, 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 yeah. You said something about the homestead <clears throat> um, exemption. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. That's something else that people will be concerned about, <clears throat> excuse me, is that they, if they, sell it to their S Corp, mm -hmm. that they're going to lose that homestead exemption. Is that true? or? Yeah, so you would, uh, mm -hmm. you would lose that homestead exemption. But keep in mind, again, it's homestead exemptions generally only apply to school districts. And it's, it's a very small exemption that you're getting there. It's not you know, significant. You're still, so for example, uh, in the state of Texas, when we lived there years ago, I believe it was about $600, $700 is what uh, the exemption was. So that just reduces how much you have to pay. And the fact that it's a rental now mm -hmm. would eliminate even the use of the homestead exemption, correct? On that piece of property, Yeah, on yes. that piece of property. Correct, so yes. if you, yeah, you did that, you couldn't even get it anyway. Yeah, you point. can go to your yeah. home, you know, the home that your parents would purchase mm -hmm. in, in, after they sold. Mm -hmm. That could become their homestead. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Well, let's talk about third-party sales. So the IRS um, can be kind of picky about this stuff, but um, especially whenever it's a uh, related party sale. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think... Um, Will, they, will it trigger audits or anything yeah. like that, basically? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the reason why I say that is because, number one, the IRS has no idea, uh, you know, if you, if you sold 
Uh, that number one, because that's not a reportable uh, transaction as far as who the parties were. Okay, that's number one. And number two, when it comes to um, the uh, you, you, uh, an S corporation is a separate entity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is an entity versus an individual. Mm -hmm. So you know your mom selling it to your dad, or mm -hmm. your dad selling it to your mom, or to you know to you, or whatever the case is. That's where that issue comes into play. Gotcha, gotcha. So just so we can remain compliant, uh, mm -hmm. there's a couple things. Um, that you can do here. One of them is to hire an appraisal. So like you're going to do just like you would a normal oh, sale absolutely. of any any house, just like you would to make sure that you can create that buffer, that you do everything by the steps. Uh, hire an appraiser. Um, you can do a title company, mm -hmm. just like you would. Um, get an inspection of the home. Um, and then also you can put everything in writing just in case the IRS will ever come back and say something. At least you have everything documented yeah. and it won't be a related yeah, part. Absolutely, yeah. Ryan. Treat it like a regular transaction. Mm -hmm. if, I, if you were selling your home to you know, John Smith. Yeah. Uh, you want to make sure that all your T's are crossed. Now, documentation is always the, the best defense when it comes to dealing with the IRS. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, perfect. Well, um, what else did um, the listeners need to know about selling your home as an S Corp? Um, would you recommend it at this point, knowing what you know now, or what would you? Yeah, in certain circumstances, I would say yes. I mean, it, it really comes down to, you know, your S corporation, that would be the first question. You know, the, you know, what type of business is it? What are the cases? Would there, you create any more liability? And of course, you want to speak to an attorney about that. But the big thing is, you know, knowing uh, every situation is different. Mm -hmm. And so certainly talk to your tax advisor, uh, your CPA about this. Uh, certainly you can welcome to, to reach out to us as well. Yep. And since it's a rental um, through the S Corp now, mm -hmm. would you be able to have more tax deductions and things like that based off that since the, bi since the business bought it or no? No, nope, it's pretty much you know, okay. treated the same way. You get to gotcha. deduct the interest and everything else like that there, the, um, the repairs, uh, you know, the taxes and all that. So Awesome. Well, good. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us for this episode. Make sure that you click like and follow if you enjoyed this episode. We'll be out with more content soon. <laughs>